Hi guys, welcome to Salt Church. It's great to be with you again. The 5th of December, we are back in church again. It's going to be so good to be back in front of everybody, worshipping, praying together and just enjoying the presence of God. Really looking forward to seeing you then. We've had such an exciting week this week. So much has been going on. We've been able to establish two new homes for families in need. A lovely lady with three kids has been established in a new home. A husband and wife and their six month old baby has been established in a new home. It's just been really, really beautiful to watch. We had so much excitement on Wednesday. One of our homeless friends who lives in a car and a trailer, it exploded into flames. He lost everything. And when we thought everything was going bad, someone beautiful from the community came and gave him a Toyota Trago and said, this is yours, mate. Just wanted to bless you. It's just so amazing what we're seeing on a daily basis. We've got some exciting things coming up in December. On the, on the 19th of December, we have got the carols at under the tree at Bombardieri. That's at four o'clock to six o'clock. We're going, we're, it's a Christmas celebration. It's been a hard year for a lot of people. We're coming out and celebrating all that is beautiful about Christmas. So I want to encourage you to come along to that. We've got Meg preaching today. We've got Bethel leading us in worship. And then I want you to stay after the message. So Meg, so you can go through the questions and the questions are about getting the words of God into our heart. It's not just hearing, it's getting them in here so we can apply it, so we can give it out to others. So God bless you. Have a great Sunday. I see you in the skies with purple hue. I hear you in the quiet morning too. And when the world is still asleep, I'm waking up to you. I see you in the glow of summer nights I feel you in the dance of ocean tides And when the world is unaware I am aware of you I don't have to search hard to find you I don't have to reach far to touch you Standing in miracles Wherever
Hi everyone, I'm just going to open in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness over our lives. And Lord, we, today we just choose to lean into you, to press into you, to hear from you and allow you to come and uh, by the power of your word, change our hearts and change our lives and open us up to a deeper level of intimacy with you. In Jesus' name. Hi, I just want to read to you from Matthew chapter 7. Um, over the last several weeks, like, like a few weeks ago, Pete and I were talking about Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7, the Sermon on the Mount and all the um, challenging things that Jesus shared in that sermon. But I just want to read to you the passage that comes at the very, very end of chapter 7. So it's, it's the very end of his Sermon on the Mount where for three chapters Jesus has shared and expounded on all the principles of heaven and the principles of the kingdom and the things that are valuable to him, the things that are valuable to God, the things that he wants us to actually live our lives by and according to. And so here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27, he says he ends that whole passage with this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. And um, just reading this passage at the very end of these chapters is a great reminder that Jesus is actually, he's, he's not only warning us, but he's strongly encouraging us to build our house upon the rock. And obviously he is the rock. But he's actually talking about these words. If, you're putting, if you put these words into practice, these things that I've just taught you on, I've taught you on the very heart of who I am, the very heart of who the Father is. So if you actually want to build a strong foundation, you actually have to build your house upon the truth of who I am. And not maybe what you think I am or what you've grown up believing I am or what other people tell you I am, but to dig deep into his word and to find Jesus of the scriptures and actually find this savior we have, this foundation we have, this rock we have to build our lives on. You know, what foundations are you building your life upon? What foundations am I building my life upon? What information do you take in at the moment to help you grow as a person? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you watching? Do you find, just, do you find that your life goes from one disaster to another or one mess to another to another to another? And is there a point where we have to say, am I founding my life upon the rock that is Jesus? Am I founding my life? Not just upon the idea that, um, you know, if I go to church each week when church is happening and I say the right things and do the right things, I'm going to be okay. No, I actually have to dig deep. To build foundations on anything, we have to dig deep. And digging deep requires time and it re requires energy and it, it requires a concerted effort. It, uh, and if we decide that we'd rather not, put that effort in then essentially we're building our house upon the sand if we're not bothering to dig deep if we're not bothering to lay the foundation for our lives and the things that are important then we're actually setting ourselves up for disaster and maybe disaster after disaster because I don't know about you but I have experienced 
multiple storms in my life. I have experienced multiple storms, multiple difficulties, multiple things that appear to actually have the power to knock me over, to take me out, to destroy my life. There have been seasons in our life that have been, if, if I had not dug deep prior to those seasons, I don't know how I would have fared. You know, it's almost like God gives us these beautiful opportunities sometimes and he's like, feed yourself on this truth. Feed yourself on the things that are going to bring life to you. Feed yourself on the things that are actually about me. And sometimes we don't know maybe why we're in a season like that. But I, my experience has been, like I actually walked through a really difficult storm about 10 years ago. And just prior to that, I, I actually had the opportunity to do an, an amazing uh, amazing Bible training school through uh, Francis Fran Japan's In Christ Image Training. And it was all about humility and it was all about the power of one Christ-like life. What does it actually mean to be like Jesus? What does it actually mean to live like him? And, and hot on the heels of that learning, I found myself in a crisis where I actually had to apply everything I'd learned on a daily basis to come through that crisis that took its time but if I hadn't applied myself to that or delved into that I may very well have ended up in a far uh, in a really not a great place and and I remember being in the very midst of that season thinking and it was probably because of the learning I'd done you know, this season has the power to harden my heart. You know, when blow after blow after blow comes and, and potential offence and uh, the opportunity for unforgiveness when unfairness happens. And, and because I had done the training that I had the opportunity to do, I actually just leaned right into it and had to apply the truth of that to my life. And so I want to encourage you. I want to ask you a question here. Are you a drifter or are you a builder? And that's probably the question of this message. Are we drifters or are we builders? Because drifters build their house upon the sand and builders determine to build their house upon the rock. And you know, a drifter is someone who drifts through life, taken by the currents of maybe popular opinion or other people's opinions or worldly wisdom and and potentially take that attitude of whatever will be, will be. We'll just see what's around the next river bend. You know, a drifter doesn't take a lot of responsibility for the direction of their life. Uh, they're influenced by particular directions and, and people and the environment around them. And they're often the first to blame the direction of their life upon others. You know, a drifter takes on popular opinions, maybe. A drifter may take on the opinion of someone who's the loudest voice in their, in their realm or the people they've chosen to surround themselves with or the culture they're, they're spending the most amount of time in. A drifter actually chooses not to dig deep but to go with the flow. But a builder is someone who takes responsibility for their life. They realise that this life of mine actually has to be founded on something and formed by materials and held together by constructs and values that are established in the truth of who Jesus is. They have to be quality materials to hold a house together. The foundation has to be solid. It has to be secure. It has to be quality. You know, Pete, is a builder and I can remember watching him build a house once and like week after week we turn up and the it was still at foundational stage. Day in and day out the foundations were getting established and you'd turn up to the job site and you'd go wow it doesn't look like anything has happened. It doesn't look like there's been anything done. When is the structure going to come up? Because everyone's excited to see the structure come up but as a good builder knows he's like Meg the foundations take time. They take resource, they take money, they take time. And if we don't get the foundations right, then the house is vulnerable to collapse or to being compromised. And so a good builder knows how to establish 
their foundations and they choose the most integrous materials to do that with. Realising that the most important place to ensure that the house is strong and intact for years to come lays in its foundation. <sighs> because if the foundation isn't sure, then the whole house is in jeopardy. And the same goes for our lives. If our foundation isn't sure, when the waves come, when the storms come, our whole life is in jeopardy. Jesus invites us onto the rock that is him. He invites us to make him our foundation. And he shares all about the principles that are so close to his heart in Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. And he warns us that our life will not withstand the storms if we do not found it upon the truths that are held in these scriptures. So he teaches on what is important in the kingdom. And Pete and I have been talking quite a bit about that over the last several weeks. But I want to encourage you to sit in these chapters. Sit. Sit in the midst of chapter 5. Mull it over. Ponder on it. Wrestle with it. Chapter 6, chapter 7, all the hard stuff Jesus says in that. Actually allow it, allow the word of God to penetrate your heart and let it lead you to Jesus. Because honestly, the whole purpose of it is to connect you on a deeper level with our Father, with Jesus in such a way that maybe we have to do some wrestling with him around the truth in these passages. Maybe we have to lay our hearts bare and say, I can't do this stuff. I, I have no capacity to forgive my enemy in this situation, Lord. And he, that's exactly, exactly where he wants to meet us. Right in the middle of the truth of his word, but the power of his Holy Spirit to actually come and change our hearts and lives. That when we can't, he can but he only will if we allow him access. He only will if we can humbly come before him and say, I can't do this. I can't. You know what? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the ones who know their need. Blessed are the ones that know they don't have that capacity because it's in that place of weakness that we lean into him and allow him to be our capacity. Allow him to be our love. Allow him to be our forgiveness. Allow him to be the one that helps us take a, a, a humble position in the situations that we might find ourselves in. He wants the scriptures to lead us to him and allow the wrestle in the application, allow ourselves to actually wrestle him in the application of those scriptures. And maybe he's going to start to undo some of the foundations that we've established our lives in that are not of him. You know, maybe you've established your life in the foundation of an identity based in what you do, in, in your career, in how much you've studied, in, in the really great, amazing, smart stuff you know. Maybe you've established your foundation in your family dynamics, in, in your family relationships, on who your kids are or who your parents are or who your siblings are. Maybe you've established your foundation on a whole bunch of things that is not him. And he's saying, let me come in and let me rework this for you. Let me rework the ground. Let me refound you so that you get to build your life upon me. I'm your rock. Build your life upon me. Let my truth and the truth of my scripture ensure that your life will be safe and strong no matter what storms come your way. And I just want to encourage you to draw close to him in intimacy, in a relationship of intimacy. Let him gather you in and let him do the fresh form work in your life because your future depends on it. My future depends on it. And it's, it's a constant ongoing process. I want to encourage you in that. Bless you guys. Look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Here are some questions for you to discuss together or actually think about in your own time. Question number one, what are some of the things we build upon that are like sand? Question number two, 
how do we practically build our lives upon the rock?